lot of uh, a lot of my fellow architects go around saying things like, "School doesn't prepare you for the real world. It doesn't prepare you for professional practice." And to which I say, "Well, that's you know, that's fine. What school teaches you how to do is how to think, and a framework." within which you can get excited about architecture. And if school has done that well, that's what it needs to be doing. You know, we can teach people how to present projects. We can teach people how to do the AutoCAD programs and do the project management and all that. You're going to learn it better in a professional situation anyway. What, what you need in school is to develop that spark that caused you to become an architect in the first place. And wherever that spark leads you, whatever, whatever road of design uh, that it takes you down. Um, and then you, you, you flesh that out as, as you start your practice. You know, like most students, I thought I would get out of school, go work for a large firm for about six months, and then go start my own firm and, and do that. And uh, it, it didn't quite work out that way. Um, ended up uh, spending 15 years at the first firm I was with and spent the last 15 years uh, here, uh, both very, very large firms. And one of the things that I think most people coming out of school don't understand is the reason you go to work for a firm is not the same reason that you stay at a firm. You go for one whole set of reasons, you stay for a different set of reasons that you can't quite know yet. Um, and you know, it, 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 because it feels good, because you like the camaraderie of, of a studio situation because you like the issues that the firm is dealing with or the resources that the firm has, or that you hate all those things and you want to try something else. Uh, and you, you can't quite know that. Um, you know, you think you know everything as you prepare for an interview and, and, and all that. And people on both sides of the table don't really know whether it's going to work out. Um, and you have to understand that there's sort of a feeling things, feeling everything out, period. Um, and hopefully, if, if it's a terrific firm that you're with and you've got uh, talents, that you find that right mesh. The large-scale practice, uh, for me, one of the most exciting things about it is that there are a whole series of individuals that can be attracted to that, each of which have particular expertise. Uh, not everyone has to be a generalist. You don't have to be equally good at all things, but if you have an area or two that you're particularly good at, you can excel in that. Uh, and, and work with a team of people who have complementary talents. Um, you know, I'm fond of telling people that the world is a much drier place because I have nothing to do with waterproofing. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be any good at that. Uh, it's not what interests me, but I am thrilled that there are people who wake up in the morning and flashing is on their mind. They worry about that detail, and they worry about how a piece of precast or a piece of stone is is connected to a building through a rain screen system. And, and um, you know, I, I'm envious of the fact that that's the way their mind works. That's not the way my mind works. But I do know that I need to hook up with those people. And that's you know that's sort of the the beauty of a large practice is that that you can do that. Um, and I've been blessed with you know, working with terrific partners and, and, and architects that, you know, have complementary talents. Uh, and it's, you know, the genius of pooling together a group of people in the very best way. Um, anyway, that's, you know, that's not something that's sort of readily obvious. Probably the biggest topic, and you know, this is not going to be any surprise, is sustainability uh, and, and livable cities. Uh, you know, we have, as a society, managed to mess up this planet. And you know, I, I know that sounds highfalutin and, or doomsday or whatever, but the reality is there's some really bad stuff in our atmosphere. And if you look at just carbon emissions, what we do for a living, building buildings, running buildings, all that, is 50% of all the carbon emissions in the United States. We could all run out and get a Prius or ride our bicycles, all that stuff, that's only 17% of the carbon emissions. 50% is the buildings. Well, that's both sort of dreadful and wonderful at the same time. The dreadful part is all this carbon is going into the atmosphere and causing global warming and uh, all of the other things. The, the opportunity is, because it's so concentrated, a relatively smaller group of people can do something about it and, and can focus on it. Uh, and it's going to take more than architects. It's going to take government and laws and 
you know, I, I believe that it is as um, important as life safety. Uh, we, we lived through a time uh, when you didn't have to put sprinklers in buildings. And, you know, people realized that, you know, no one had ever died. By, you know, by 1985, no one had ever died in a building that was sprinklered and was working properly unless that person had set the fire. Now, I don't know how they found that data, but, but that's a pretty staggering thing. And so, you know, we passed a bunch of laws that said we're going to sprinkler our buildings. Uh, you know, the Chicago fire, great Chicago fire, led rise to our fire codes 20, 30 years later. The San Francisco earthquake led rise. You know, we, as Americans, we love our disasters. Our disasters sort of lead us into lots of, well, Hurricane Katrina, for me, was that disaster. Hurricane Katrina was a predictable event. In fact, it was predicted. Um, and, you know, other Katrinas are going to occur as water level rises and, and, and so forth. Um, you know, and that's just one piece of, of what we're doing to the environment. So I really think sustainability is absolutely in the forefront.